YouTube, it's Laser Just Fan talking at you again after a long hiatus. Um, I've been busy a lot and I haven't really got around to posting more videos. Um, I finally decided to get around to posting a new video um, about something that's vastly different than what I've ever posted about before. Um, I want to talk about Betamax. Now, why in the world would I, a LaserDisc fan, <laughs> want to talk about an old format like Betamax? Well, I've always been fascinated with home video, and from my earliest days, when my parents first bought a VCR, um, we had to go to this town, like two towns over, to find a rental place. And when I went there, I was surprised to see there was two different sections. There was a section for VHS, what we had. We had a VHS VCR, old Panasonic top loader, you remember those things. And um, there was a section for what they called Beta. And I was wondering, like, What's wrong with these tapes, Dad? Why can't we get those? We can't play those tapes on our machines. Like, why not? He really couldn't give me an answer. My dad was a very technical person. But um, it wasn't until years later where I actually, you know, I went to visit my, uh, my cousin down in Maryland. Um, he, they had a Betamax VCR, and they had a bunch of movies they recorded on Betamax there. And I was just fascinated by the size of the tape. I just still didn't know much difference between the tape. So I started, years go by, and I started doing more research on it. And started to look at the reasons why Betamax failed versus VHS because I see, I see technical things like you know they say Betamax is technically superior to uh, VHS by picture wise stuff like that and uh, they, the one, the, one the, big, the big band about reason why Betamax failed was because they didn't license porn on Betamax well that turns out it's not true I mean if you go to the adult section of eBay and look for Betamax you'll find plenty so that's not true so I started looking at the problems, what the problems were with Betamax, and I always wanted to see what the quality of, the beta, of Betamax was, because they say you know it looks better. And I, you all found out there's you know like there's Betamax and there's Betamax Super Betamax and there's Super Betamax High Band and an ED Beta, which is almost completely format, even a completely new video format, even though um, it uses the same form factor as Betamax. And also there's a professional for, uh, professional uh, form, uh, Betamax format called Beta Cam, which you use for news gathering stuff like that. So I'm doing some research, I wanted to see why Betamax failed. I think the biggest reason was the playing time was one of the bigger reasons because initially there was only one speed for Betamax. Like there was one, and, and when VHS first came out, there was only one speed for VHS. That was, uh, they originally called it X1 speed, and they called it B1 speed. B1, X1 speed was the better quality for, uh, format because it, it had less video noise than VHS, slightly higher resolution. But the only problem was because of the small tape, you only had one hour of recording time. That's because Sony based it off of their professional uh, U-Matic format, which also a one-hour recording time. They figured since that's what, that was the average time of a television show, one hour, they only needed a one-hour tape. Not taking into account that you know the VCR cost thousand bucks, and on top of that, the blank tapes cost thirty bucks back in 1975. <laughs> that's a lot to swallow back then. And VHS out of the box was a two-hour format because they had a bigger tape, so they had you know, these, these smaller tapes, which was. I think it was a part of the Japanese mentality of Sony when they, when, of, the, of the smaller tape because um, you know they don't believe in, like, you know, in the American uh, the, uh, uh, ideal of like bigger better that kind of thing. They want it smaller because there's not a lot of space in Japan probably. <laughs> That's and, uh, so they make the tape small. They kept the tape small and make it a uh, keep the one hour format. And eventually, but that's one of the reasons why when Sony was looking for licensees. Back in the 70s, RCA was the biggest television company in America and had the biggest marketing acumen. And RCA wanted a longer playing or a longer recording time for Betamax if they weren't going to get on board. And at the time, Sony didn't have that. They couldn't. They said, we could probably make it a two-hour format if we, you know, half the time and stuff like that. But um, they couldn't get along with that because they thought, you know, RCA was like, well, we need to be able to record a, a, a football game, which is three or four hours long. And so Beta couldn't come, uh, Sony couldn't come up with a solution for them. But when RCA went to Matsushita with JVC's VHS, they said, "Can you make a four-hour VHS?" And they did. So RCA jumped on, jumped on with Betamax, and because of, you know, that, they didn't, so they couldn't get RCA on their, on their side so they, to make a to keep a, to get the the, the biggest uh, TV manufacturer in America to make VCRs for them. So they now started making VHS, and plus. Sony had a couple blunders trying to get more people to jump on the Betamax bandwagon to make more, have more manufacturers making Betamax VCRs. So there was never as many Betamax VCRs as there were in VHS, and they were and the VHS VCRs were cheaper too. So one thing I always wondered is, is if they, because if they had the better, better quality, 
they could have just let's just make a bigger tape, you know. If not for the Japanese, if not for the Japanese uh, market, make one for the American market. I mean, because they did, they actually made a larger beta beta uh, format tape, but for the professional uh, for the professional uh, format beta cam. So like, this is a standard beta max tape. It's, it's not very big at all. And here is you know here's a VHS. As you can see, the VHS is rather much, much larger, maybe maybe one and a half times larger. And um, this is a beta cam tape, st standard beta cam. This is a BCT30, which equals to about, um, if you're recording in B1 speed on a regular Betamax VCR, this will give you a 90 minutes of recording time. And as you can see, there's not much difference between the standard beta cam and a Betamax tape. They're practically the same. You can actually use a beta cam tape in a Betamax VCR. You just can't use a beta, beta cam SP tape because it's a diff totally different type of uh, tape formulation. Uh, you know they use uh, oxide tapes for beta cam and uh, beta max, um, but beta cam SP is a metal uh, a metal metal format tape, and uh, so they made a larger beta cam tape. We help they call it the beta cam large format, and it's this gigantic thing. <laughs> this is a beta cam BCT60, and this giant thing. Uh, it gives you 60 minutes of beta cam recording or beta cam SP recording. It's actually SP, SP tape. They also, also made a beta cam uh, large format tape like this. Um, it, if they made a tape like this for the American market and made it for a uh, regular Betamax, this would have given you three hours of recording time at B1 speed. And if they further develop, further develop the B2 speed, which is the half speed format, we give them double the time, this would give you a six hour Betamax tape. And um, if they if further develop the B3 speed, which is the which is the one third speed, this would give you a nine hour. So this been e very easily equal to uh, VHS at the time, giving them the better quality, and they would probably would have gotten RCA, RCL on board with this. And um, as you can see, this is compared. <laughs> this is the beta cam. This is the VHS. It's a much larger tape. Now, maybe they wouldn't have made a lot of a tape as this as as big. Maybe one just. Twice as big as the as a standard beta beta max. But look, it's like three times as big. Maybe one just twice as big. That would have given them, you know, because this is actually they actually made a tape uh, a ninety minute tape like this, which would have been would have been a four hour four and a half hour B one uh, recording tape, and, and a nine hour, and a nine hour B two recording tape. So and maybe it's made of double size tape, so they can give them a you know. Uh, you know, a six-hour, uh, you know, a six-hour B3, two hours at um, at uh, at B1, and that probably would have put on equal ground with VHS, and it would have gotten the RCA on board, and maybe other manufacturers on board, and they probably would have won the format war. But you know, hindsight is 2020. So we are we are with Betamax. So and like I said, I just started getting into it, and I decided to go uh, on Craigslist last year because I was interested in Betamax. I just did a uh, uh, I did a uh, quick search on Craigslist for Betamax, and popped up a really high-end Betamax VCR. So I decided to buy it, and I started playing around with it. So what I want to do is show you what VCRs I've, I picked up three in the last uh, few months. Uh, I want to show you those VCRs, and uh, we'll get to that right now. Okay, so this is the first VCR I picked up last year. I picked it up uh, like the end of summer last year. This is the Sony SLHF750. Uh, Super Betamax VCR. Um, it is a really neat VCR. I I, I looked it up and um, when I, this is the first one I was looking up and I had read that this was one of the quote unquote dream machines. If you go to betainfoguide.net, because um, it's, it's, this thing is built like a tank. I think it weighs about thirty five, th maybe about thirty pounds. It's pretty darn heavy, um, and it has the really really um, unique uh, loading system. Uh, if you'll yeah, let's do this. It's the eject button here. It's I've never. It's a really overly complicated design, but I mean, it's, I think it's really neat. Where you just open, it pops out like that for you. So let's pop in a tape. Got Iron Master here, and there we go. And we press play. Yeah, I'm supposed to, uh, 
I've got a Sony Betamax. I gotta watch it on a Sony, uh, a Sony Trinitron television. And the cool thing, another neat thing about this, you can actually open up the uh, tape tray while it's playing. I don't know why you would want to do that <laughs> while it's still playing, but you can. So the technical aspects about this thing, it's um, I got it mainly because it supports all three Betamax recording speeds. Um, you know, it supports B1, but also B1 Super, B1S as they call it, B2 and B3. It can record and play back all three formats. That's one of the blunders I think Sony uh, Sony had with the uh, with Betamax is they didn't support not every VCR supported all three speeds. They made some that just did B2 only. So, uh, the original Betamax VCRs did only B1 speed. Uh, then it made, you know, Betamax did B1 and B2. They further slowed down the speed for a, ha a th one third speed video um, and made B3 speed. And uh, it was, you know, and then they made just VCRs that did only B2 speeds and B2 and B3 only for the longest time. And then, you know, some, some they made VCRs that only did B3 speed. So uh, they should have just stuck with, you know, making, making sure, like, uh, JVC. When they made you know, with VHS, they they had they, anyone who licensed VHS VCRs, they said every V every VHS VCR has to support SP speed, the two hour speed, so they get the best quality out of that, you know. But Sony never did that. You know, they dropped the B one speed. This is the first bad, after they dropped the B one speed in the eighties. This was the first the VCR. Uh, it came out in eighty five or eighty six that uh, brought back the B one speed to the format. So for the longest time, you couldn't record in B one speed. You know, even though it only gave you a one-hour recording sp uh, speed on a on the L500, but you know, then they then they created more tapes that you, uh, you you can record on for longer speeds. Uh, I'll show you the tapes later, but uh, yeah, this one brought back the B1 speed back to the format, and you know, they should have just kept it all for all three speeds. So, this is the you know the HS750. Um, I might actually keep this VCR because I like the loading mechanism just for the fun of it. Uh, but let me get to my next VCR. Okay, so this is the second VCR that I picked up. This is a Sony SLHF870D. I think this is one of the last VCRs, Betamax VCRs, that uh, Sony released in America. Uh, I think it was a 1991 or 92 uh, VCR. Um, it is a pretty decent VCR. It's a, it's a nice, you know, look looks nice. I mean, it's got a nice wooden side panels here, and. Um, a lot of features on the. Uh, it's a lot good for editing. Has a lot of editing features. Has a lot of wacky digital effects. I don't know why would you want them, but they're there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's but the problem with this VCR is it doesn't support all three Betamax speeds. It supports. You can record. You can play back B1, B1S, uh, B2, and B3, but you cannot record in B1 speed. It only records in B2 and B3 speeds. Why Sony decided to do that, I just don't understand. They should have just included B1 speed on all the up every VCR they made, but it is where it is. So let's check it out here. This unlike the uh, the unlike the uh, the HF7 uh, HF7750. This one has a standard front loading tape cassette. So we got uh, Dream Academy here. If I can get that out of the case with one hand, which I can't. <laughs> And like I said, it's got a bunch of weird um, uh, digital effects, like you got mosaic art. And uh, let's see, we got uh, picture art, like it desaturates the colors, or just brings it down like 16, or 8 8 bit colors. And then we got uh, multi strobe. Yeah, I just. And you know, why would anyone want to do this? I really don't know, but it is what it is. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the 
SLHF 870D. I'm probably not going to hold on to this one because you know if I'm going to if I want a Betamax VCR, I want all three speeds to be recordable. Not that I'm going to record much anymore, but I want the, uh, the capability just in case, just to play with it, you know. But uh, that's the HF 70 870D. It's a